Okay, so let's talk about what we did the other day, partially because the apparently the recording from the other day didn't work out very well. So here's our file stuff that we've been working on, and we said that print writer basically took a file name and wrote it into the current directory, opened up a file. You could write lines into it. We said that the print writer class worked pretty much exactly like system out print line. So whatever you can give to system out print line in terms of formatting, you can also do here. And remember that system out print line has that uh, format facility that we looked at the other day so you can format the lines in nice format you can put floating point numbers in with two decimal points and all that sort of good stuff in either the Java way or the C way uh, once we got the thing written out we said that a good thing to do was to close the file which just basically tells the operating system that it can free up some space so there's a limit to the number of files that you can have open. That's almost always a good thing to do. But I also pointed out that, uh, that these days what typically happens with a lot of these programs is that the instant you run off the end of a method, then the runtime system will realize that you're no longer using that variable and it'll close the file for you. Uh, so uh, it's probably less of an issue these days because you're writing smaller methods that just read small amounts of things uh, and also because uh, uh, the runtime environment is, is likely to do it for you and also because the number of files that you can have open is probably so large these days that unless you're doing something really serious and opening, opening hundreds of files you're probably not going to see any sort of an issue anyway. Uh, so when we wrote stuff out uh, that was fine. The next process is to say, well, okay, what if I want to read things back in? And we introduced the scanner class as being the Swiss Army knife of, of uh, input. It does all sorts of fancy things. And so there's an example of using the scanner class to then turn around and open a file object. And we said that saying file there was very important because if you didn't say file, what would happen is a uh, scanner would just scan the string instead of the file, which probably isn't what you want. And so just to be consistent whether or not you need it, you're probably better off to always say new file on things uh, just to remind people that it's a file and not a string and then you just won't get into any trouble. Okay. Uh, the other interesting thing about, about uh, I.O. is that for the most part you usually don't have any idea of how many things you're going to read. Okay? So typically uh, you, you don't ever bother to go look and inspect the file and say, gee, I wonder how many lines are in it. I wonder, how, and it may even be difficult to figure that out uh, if, they're, uh, if they're not fixed record size uh, files. Uh, so for the most part, usually what you'll see with file I.O. is that you'll use a while loop rather than any sort of a for loop. And notice that the sense of a while loop is almost always, I don't know how many things to expect. So if you do know exactly how many things to expect, you're probably using a counted loop. Uh, since we don't know, these things are invariably written as while loops. Okay, so we'll keep reading lines from the file until there aren't any more to read. That sense of, I don't know how many there could be. And if you think of a human being as typing, uh, at some point uh, they just get tired of typing and they say they're done. So human beings being unpredictable, there's that, that sense with the, the while loop, even though this is coming from a file. Uh, scanner has a whole bunch of has next. Probably the most common one is to read a line at a time if you're reading text files. And so there's asking the scanner, do you have another line of input for me? Eventually, scanner says no. Okay, And then you can proceed to do something like close the file. In the case where a scanner says yes, it becomes, well, go get the next line of text for me. And in this case, we're not parsing it. We're just printing it out. Okay. 
Um, we also looked at, uh, at uh, scanner being able to, uh, uh, to do some fancier things. And so here's scanner parsing a, uh, a string instead of, instead of text, or sorry, instead of a file. And so in this case, we're going to open up the string and, have, and go through uh, uh, the string. The string has got pairs of things in it separated by uh, an equal sign. And so the typical thing that scanner does is it will break up or parse the line based on spaces. And so what we've done there is we've written a loop that says uh, go through all of the lines of, of, in this case there is only one, or sorry, go through all of the, uh, the strings, okay? So that's has next string, really, okay? Uh, at grab the first pair of things up to the space, which is that, uh, and then see whether or not we can split that. And the other comment I made is that much as you're tempted to turn around and write loops within loops, it's almost always a good idea to take whatever might be an inner loop, oh, I've got to go through and do something else, and just put it into a method. The reason for that is it makes it really clear to people what you're attempting to do. It hides the loop, so it reduces the complexity, and it gives you something that's testable because you've got a method that you can always go back and look at later to test. Okay, so you can test the innermost thing first, and then once you get that to work, you can work your way out to the outermost thing. So if we go and look at parse pair, parse pair now takes uh, uh, strings that are separated by, or, or two values that are separated by an equal sign, and so we'll play the same game again of getting scanner to parse the pair, only this time we'll say use an equal sign as the delimiter rather than the space. And then rather than even writing a loop, I've chosen to say, well, since I'm expecting two things on a line, I'm just going to use next to retrieve each one of those things that are on a line. Just out of interest sake, uh, what happens if that thing, if there's only one thing on the line, or no equals sign, or nothing after the equals? If it doesn't mas match the format exactly, what do you expect is going to happen? Pardon me? Yeah, you're, it's going gonna, it's gonna to throw some sort of an error, right? And so uh, what you end up having to do is, is, uh, is catch the error at some point if you're worried about whether or not the, the, the file doesn't have the correct stuff in it. Okay, so we'll start out with working, for thing, working with files where we, uh, we know they're of the, the correct format. And so this thing will just basically split the line on the equals, and it ends up producing the pair of things together per line with, uh, without the equals uh, between them. Okay? So that was the business of being able to use scanner to work on strings. The third option was to, for scanner was to say, well, scanner will actually work on network files. And so here was an example of using the URL class to construct a URL object. And the URL class is smart enough to be able to parse a URL into its component pieces and figure out what it has to do, make sure it's of the correct format, which is why you'll notice at the top there, URL can throw a malformed URL exception, which says, I don't like the way that you've constructed that URL. And you know, you've left something off of it or messed it up somehow. And in this case, we've just chosen to ignore ignore that thing, uh, ignore that exception, and, and uh, uh, just kill the program. Um, so we make a URL object, and then the URL class has an open stream method, and the open stream method essentially gives you something that now the scanner class can work with. So the scanner class will then proceed to, uh, uh, to open that file, which is actually coming across a network. And then we can play the same game of saying, well, has next line. Let's just go pick up next lines out of that, uh, uh, that file. And that thing turns out to be the uh, uh, commotion.ca HTML index file. That's the first thing that is the thing that comes out of there. 
Okay, so there's scanner being able to now give you lines of a file that are coming from across the network. So basically, any file that's sitting on a web server now that you want to go read, whether it be an HTML formatted file or even if it's just simply a data file that a web server will serve to you, you can now use that technique to, to uh, go through and read that file uh, off of a server. Okay. So anything that you can get off of a, an HTTP server, uh, even if it's an, just a normal file, you've now got the ability to go through and grab that thing and work with it. And there's the traditional close. We also mentioned that Eclipse is now pretty good at signaling whether when you need to do the close and reminding you with a little yellow bulb to say you need to write the close before the end of that, uh, that method. Okay. So there's three different things that you can do with the scanner class, uh, all that are, that are fairly interesting. Okay. Um, questions on that so far? Okay, suppose that I want to uh, uh, instead uh, read things from the console. Okay. It turns out that our, our friend, the, the scanner class, will also do that. And just let me go grab a, a, a piece of text that I've got for that. And I'm just going to put this up at the top of the file uh, where we can see it. And Oops. I tried, it didn't quite work, oh well. So let me get rid of some of these errors here for a second. And then run source format on it to make it pretty. Okay, so here's an example of doing a prompt to a user, so that's just going out to the console. And then using the scanner class, and saying uh, the thing I, that I want you to read from is now system.in. So for as much as there's a system.out to uh, uh, send information out to the console, there's also a system.in to read stuff from the console. So you make a new scanner uh, that's going to handle your input. Uh, the result string I've just left as, a, as a, an empty string. And then there's the sense of talking to the scanner, uh, or, or sorry, of, of doing a while loop to say, I'm just going to continue processing. And in this case, I'm waiting for somebody to type done, either type a line or type done to say that they're finished. Okay. And there's get the scanner to read the next line and then print out whatever gets said until, so this is just going to keep repeating until somebody types the word done. It's just going to keep echoing stuff back. Okay. Uh, and again, you'll see Eclipse is complaining that, uh, that we never did a close. So we'll do input.close down here just to close the file. Okay. If we run this thing, Now there's the enter input message, and we can type something, and it just gets repeated. And Eclipse is sort of weird about the, 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 the console here and how it sets the, the cursor. And this is, by the way, just an indicator that nobody reads text stuff anymore from the console, so it's not exactly set up right. So we'll just enter uh, more stuff and it just keeps repeating and then eventually when you type done it's going to pick up the done word uh, and then it's going to move on and do the other stuff that happens to be in that main program which included reading from the commotion.ca website which is what that last bit of crud is there okay so this little thing is is uh is also a fairly common pattern this is waiting for the user to type something. Uh, you notice the other alternative here is to turn this into uh, while scanner dot has next. Okay. The problem with that is that has next 
uh, telling the uh, uh, different operating systems that you're done from from uh, text-based input uh, differs across operating systems. So, for instance, on on Linux, it's Control D to say that I'm finished, right? So that would be an end of file. On uh, Windows, I can't even remember what it is anymore, but I don't think it's Control D. What is it? Does anybody know? something special. It's usually some special key sequence that you hit on operating systems to say, uh, you know, I'm done, I'm done with input. Uh, so since it differs across operating systems, I just chose to ignore the issue and make somebody type the word done, which means you can't use done anywhere in the input, at, the, at least at, not at the start of the line by itself. Um, but there's all there is to read from files or sorry, to, uh, uh, to uh, read from text input. Okay, so not particularly complicated with the scanner class. If you try to do it without the scanner class in older versions of Java, it's, it's a little weirder. Okay, so that was the, uh, uh, sorry. So now the result variable contains some stuff, more stuff done, or just? Correct. Everything we no, just one at a time because it's not being concatenated. So I'm just throwing away that that uh, that line every time because that's a direct assignment. Okay. That's the next line doesn't go to next line. Store the variable goes to next line. Store. This is just one line at a time. I'm not concatenating anything. So that stuff, I'm not building a line. It's just okay. so in here you would do whatever processing you wanted with the line instead of saying you said. Okay. So it, just it just overwrites the last one because I'm assigning directly to the result variable there with the equal sign. Okay. So this would be the case if the user were typing, you know, three pieces of information. That's the point where you would send that off to a parsing routine like we did to say, okay, now split up the line into its component pieces. Okay. So, uh, like I said, the, Swi the, you know, the scanner class is basically the Swiss army knife of input for you now. You know, whenever you need your go-to thing to say, I want to get input from a file, chances are probably good that the scanner class is the easiest way to do it. It's not always the most efficient, but, you know, if you're only reading files that are, you know, a few thousand lines long, uh, it's sort of a shrug. It'll work just fine. Uh, it's not really not really an issue to worry about efficiency too much, except for really huge files. Okay, so let's leave the uh, the file uh, or the the scanner class for a second, and let's move on to uh, to talking about something that we've been doing uh, fairly frequently, which is making a list of something like students. Uh, adding all of those students at some point uh, into the list. Uh, think of this as being an interactive program that actually does this. You know, you've got a GUI and we've been typing in fishermen and all that sort of stuff for students, some of the things that we've been doing. And at some point, uh, somebody wants to exit the program, so you want to turn around and write out all of that information to a file so that you can then read it in the next time the program starts up. Okay, so now the question becomes, how are we going to get all of that stuff into a file? So tell me what the process is going to be when we've got uh, three student objects on a list. Just in English, what are you going to have to do to write it out to a file? What are the steps you're going to have to do? Open the file. Open the file. For for now, you said while a list has elements, but really for each uh, uh, item in the list, we'll write, that item. write that item out. Okay, so if we've got a student object that's got three pieces of information in it, what are you going to have to do to write it out? So that does that goes through all of the students. But when it comes to writing out a single student worth of information, what are you going to have to do? 
Well, you could use a two string. The problem with the two string is that you get formatted stuff, right? You don't get just Fred Flintstone 23, but use the writer. And so basically you're gonna have to do like what we said the other day, is that you're gonna have to concatenate a string that's got all three pieces of the student information or however much student information you have and then write out that line at a time so each line in the file is going to be basically one student record. Okay, So let's just give that a try. We're going to, I've made a, a, a file name variable, uh, myfile.txt, I guess we should call this, uh, we'll call this student file. Text. So the first thing you said was for each student in the uh, all students list. If we were just going to print them out. Okay, so let's do that. We'd say print line and then we'd say who dot get first name plus the space plus who dot get last name plus the space plus who dot get age. So we'd have to basically break the line up into three components like that to, to write it out. And just to be clear, I'm going to do this. To give the sense, a little bit more of the sense of the, the, the three separate things here. So what we'd really do is we'd write out uh, first. Let me fix it up a little bit nicer. Then we'd go get their last name, and we do a. Notice I'm doing a print instead of a print line. Oops. And then we do who dot get age is returning an integer which is a native type and age is a string so now we have to figure out how to convert from string to integer How come it worked on the print line? A couple of, a couple of little tricks here. One thing that you can do is that little bit of sneakiness. And that's just a, just a trick that says to the compiler, oh, well, that thing's an integer, but if you want it converted to a string, the compiler will somehow magically do the work for you because now it knows that you're doing, this is really string concatenation, right? So it says, well, okay, if I've got string concatenation there, then I'll figure out how to convert that native type to a string for you, and we'll put that into a variable, okay? So I specifically, the reason I broke up that line is because I wanted you to be aware that that's the little trick that's being played here. And so quite often that's what you'll see. There's an easy way of, of, uh, of converting things. It turns out that there's another way of converting things. So there's really what we want, right, is that this thing has to be into an integer variable. And then what you can do is you can do age equals K 
capital I integer, oh look, capital I integer has a two-string class that, or, or a two-string method that takes a small i integer and converts it to uh, the appropriate string. Okay. Notice that there's some other interesting options there. So you can take the number and you can convert it to binary if you want ones and zeros. You can convert it to a string of, of, of hex or, or octal. So it's actually two string is again, uh, or sorry, the capital I integer class has, has a whole bunch of things that are surprisingly handy sometimes. Uh, but the one that we want is just uh, two string uh, with the uh, age variable, if I did that right. Uh, oh yeah, I can't use age twice. Okay, so there's really an idea of what the compiler is, is doing for you. Is it saying, oh, you need a conversion, let me do it. And if you want to do it explicitly, there's one way of doing it, is to use that, that method in the integer class. And notice that you don't need, because it's a static method, it's like a, a little, what, what you would call a function out of a library, where you can just use the name of the capital I integer class and call the function without having to make an actual uh, big I integer variable in order to do the work. Okay, so that would be the, the, the long conversion for doing the thing, and then you can turn around and basically write those pieces out to the file in any format you want. So you can put spaces between them, you can put colons between them, whatever you happen to want for the thing. So you might actually then a, a, a assemble a result, and that's going to be first plus the last plus the an age variable, which is the string. So now we've concatenated all of them together, and then you could turn around and doing it the long way, that would be a uh, uh, print line of result. So I guess I don't really need that anymore, did I, since I'm doing it that way. Get rid of those intermediate beasts and just do the result that way. Can we use the age instead of an age in the string result? Yeah, you could. But I was just, like I say, I was just trying to show you what the actual conversion utility was. So trying to give you a sense of that thing, because sometimes you need it for various other reasons. Okay, so that's how we would, we would uh, uh, write it out to the console. So if you want to write it out to a file instead, what are you going to do? Put the same thing in a, in, a, in a print writer so we can, oops, we can turn around and say uh, print writer Writer is new print writer with the new file explicitly of file name. do the import statements to make sure we get all of the pieces. And eventually I think I'll get them all. And now we get the issue of, oh, okay, that file object, the name might not be uh, correct name, uh, a correct name, so it could die on that name or die on a path name. So we'll just do the, the, the easy fix there which is to uh, throw an exception, and then we'd end up with the file written out. Okay, let's just give that a, 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 a try and see what happens. 
run the thing. Oops. That needs to be now instead of system out print line, that needs to be uh, writer dot write of the string. And let's just see what happens in our file. Now that stuff should be written out to the file. Uh, again, just to remind you, you probably have to uh, refresh this thing. If I can find uh, refresh. And there's, let's just have a look at our st uh, student file. Nothing got written out. Writer dot close. Let's give that a try. Run it again. Open up the file and have a look. Oh look. There they are. So, what did you just learn about clothes? Yeah, it, it ends up being sort of important because if you don't close the file, then what, what sometimes happens is the stuff at the end of the file doesn't get written properly. Okay. If we'd written lots and lots and lots of stuff to the file, eventually the system probably would have decided to write it out for us uh, just because it had to. But for this short file, uh, it just said, oh, okay, we haven't actually written anything out yet. It didn't actually go to disk. And so if you don't close it, you end up with nothing in the file. Okay. Anything else we have to fix? We want those on... Uh, separate lines, right? So if we're lucky, there's a writer dot write line, no. Writer dot instead of, uh, I think we want print, there's writer dot print line that will write out the result. So writer.write gives you the stuff just without a, a line ending character. Let's give that a try. So we'll close this up uh, just so we can go look at it again, uh, run the thing, and have a look in student file, and there's what we want. Now we got the, the thing separated nicely. Okay, uh, just out of interest sake, if we do writer. Dot What do you think flush does? Yeah. Typically a lot of these I.O. things play a trick. When you say write something out, it's always been an expensive operation to go talk to the disk drive or to write something out across a network. And so typically what it will do rather than make you wait is it will take whatever you wrote out and it'll do what's called buffering. So we'll just stash away a line at a time for a while. We'll build up you know, 50 or 100 lines worth of stuff and then we'll send it all at once, which is a more efficient operation. Okay? And so that's one of the reasons why when you don't close a file, the stuff doesn't get written out because what it'll have done is it will have buffered some amount of stuff and then when you go and terminate the program it's never an opportunity for the buffer to get written out okay so the the close forces the buffer to 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 uh, write things out the other thing you can do is you can force it to be written yourself which is what a flush does okay so just out of interest sake let's let's do uh uh, do a print line, see if this works, writer dot flush, and I'm going to specifically for fun just leave off the close for a moment because I'm just interested in answering the question, gee I wonder if flush will actually end up having every line written out. So we'll run that again and we'll open up 
student file, and there they are. Okay? So if you really and truly want things written out and you're afraid that you know, your program is going to crash or for whatever reason things aren't going to be written out, you can always force whatever has been buffered to be written out by using a flush command. It's typically a bad idea because all of the performance reasons for, for saving stuff up have now gone away. Right? So if you do a flush every time you're doing the, the worst case performance that you can get for the thing. So the better performance way of doing things would be to say, we'll just let this thing take care of buffering up however much it needs to and figuring out how to do that. And I'm just going to remind it that I'm done with the file so that it writes out the very last stuff. Okay? Or to put it another way, if you ever see a file that you've got that's somehow missing the endmost stuff, chances are pretty good that what you forgot to do was a close someplace along the line and the thing just basically threw away the uh, end material from the file. The file name is a string from just up above. No, it's just a it's just a variable. Yeah. The reason I put it into a variable is is because now I'm going to turn around and try and read that file back in. Okay. So suppose we wanted to now that we've written out that file. Okay. So think of this as being it's sort of backwards actually. What's happened is somehow we've ended up with some data. You can think of the program now as wanting to close. So it's like, oh, I better write out all my data to a file. And so we'll now think of this next part as being, well, what if I were restarting the program from fresh? How would I read that information back in again? So let's reverse the process and see if we can get the stuff back in. Okay. So we've already got the file name to read up above. That's that thing. So now what's going to read the file back in? Scanner. scanner will do it. So we'll make a scanner in file is a new scanner. And this is the one where you have to be careful and it's best to say specifically new file with whatever I called it, uh, file name. and do the import for the scanner and then what? Think of, you know, in a lot of cases the best thing to do if you're writing code that's going to go to a file is to just think of how would I read it in and print it out and then once you get it printed out, you can know that it's printing okay, you can always go back and figure out, well, instead of printing it, let me do something else with it. I want to just print out the contents of this file. So a, a while loop, so while in file dot has next what thing. So yeah, if you want to read it a line at a time, the best thing to do is has next line because we wrote it out basically a line at a time. So I want to get one line. There's next line to read it back in. And then just do the simple thing here to start with to see whether or not you're getting each line of text. Let's just write it back out. And there's Eclipse warning us again that we're probably best to do in file dot close. And then we'll run that thing and we get all the stuff printed out. But I don't want to print it out what I want to do is I want to get it back into a list 
like I had here. Okay, because it originally came from a list, so I want to take those three lines of data and get them back into a list of three students. So what am I going to have to do to this thing? So this is going to have to somehow add to the, break up the line and add to the list. But we don't have a list yet, so let's go back up here and let's make, uh, I'm going to put it into a different uh, array list. So this is going to be a list of student copy of students is new array list. And notice I'm using the shortcut there of it already knows that it's a student list. Okay, So there's copy of students set to go to make the list. So this is the point where things have to change with the line. What are you expecting to see on the line? Single line has, in this case, first name, last name, and age. So uh, string first is in file dot, which one? Next is the one that just breaks on, on a, a space at a time. String last is in file dot next again and string age is in file dot next again. So now I've got hopefully the three pieces of student Notice that in this case, I'm just assuming that there will be three things on a line. So we, hopefully nobody's gone in and edited this file and casually removed something from the line. We're just going to worry for a start of how do we work with lines that are absolutely correct. Okay, So I'll do three next to process the thing. And now I want to make a student with first last and age but what's the problem with ages needs to be a native type so we need to convert that thing to an int Big I integer will probably be your friend. And this is the one that's a little tough to see. There's one called parse int. And parse int will convert age to an appropriate integer value so that you can now say int age there. Get that student. And then what do you do with it? add it to the list. So now we've got a student. So now we can do uh, whatever my list is called. Copy of students. To add them to the list. Okay. And we'll close the file and just for fun we'll do uh, um, for student, a student in copy of students uh, a student dot uh, we'll just do first name just for the fun of it, just to see whether or not we got it all printed out. Okay. Oops. Scanner gave a no such element exception at
that line. This reads the entire line in, but there's three things on the line. That thing proceeds to read something from the same scanner object. So the mistake here is There's four things, yeah, there's four things coming from in file, and these things from in file should actually be from the string that we just read. So what we need is another scanner in here. A new scanner to go and break up the line. So you could either break up the line or the other alternative <coughs> is to remove that line and now we're just going and grabbing expecting uh, three things across the line, each of the lines. Let's give that a try and see whether or not that works. still dies there. Maybe our other way was better. Go grab the next line and then we'll do Splitter is new scanner with a line and then we'll change this thing to the splitter and we'll see if that works. There we go. So this idea that you know, if you're going to read, if you're thinking about a line at a time, then let's just go do that. Let's think about, oh, I need a line. Let's go grab the line. And then the next idea is now that I've got a line, let's split the line into its component pieces. So when you separate out the ideas, the tends to be relatively error free and you end up with being able to read all of the information back in again. Okay. So that's the difficult way of reading, a, reading and writing a student object, this sense that you have to take the three component pieces out of each student object, you know, separate them out, write them out now as a string, and then you have to reconstitute them when they come back in, read a line at a time, grab the separate pieces, make a new student object, add the student object to the list, and if you do that, you eventually end up with, interestingly enough, a uh, copy of the list. So there's the long way to copy a list, write it out to a file, read it back in, and you've now got your copy. Okay? So tomorrow we'll look at some simpler ways to do this process that are a little bit more convenient than having to write out the component pieces. And with that, we're done. <laughs>